there's a top 10 list of things that you want your table saw to do, ripping has to be right at the top. Ripping is simply cutting with the grain, specifically in solid material. You use it to make parts for making furniture. You start with wide boards, but oftentimes you have to use narrow boards. Right, and the narrower the board, the trickier the cut, because wood can have a mind of its own. Here's an example of that. We removed the pawls and the guard on this saw, just to show you how wood can have internal stresses that are released when you start ripping it. So this is when you have to get seriously safety minded. We recommend push devices, push sticks, push handles, push blocks. Yeah, we're pushing push blocks. <laughs> right. Now you can buy them or you can make your own. You should have an assortment either way you shake it. Now this one, for instance, is for very narrow pieces of stock. And then over here, it has an adjustable foot. So that can accommodate different thicknesses of stock. This is a push device with a rubber face. And the nice thing about this particular piece is that it can do double duty. For instance, if you do not have a guard over your blade, you can actually use this over the blade. It'll clear it and it'll also keep your fingers safe as you push the wood along. Ripping is just so rip-roaring fun that we're gonna demo some easy cuts and some not so easy cuts for you. The cut I'll be making on this board is an easy cut and here's why this is prepared stock that means it's flattened and it's perfectly straightened and squared on one edge and we did that with a jointer in fact in our way to woodwork series master craftsman ian kirby walks you through all the steps in preparing stock so it's ready for furniture now the second reason this is an easy cut to make is this is a relatively wide board Anytime you have to make a cut that's four inches or wider, there's a good safe distance between the blade and your hand. Finally, this is a manageable piece of stock. It's a one person job. It's not like some big old four by eight piece of plywood that you're trying to work with. So let's get it cut. You start by setting the blade so the gullets are just above the thickness of the piece. Next, adjust the fence to the width you need to cut. Start the saw. And butt the workpiece against the fence. Feed it through, keeping it snug against the fence. And I like to use a push stick, no matter what width, roughly centering it on the piece. The waist side is called the falling stock, leaving you with what's called the work piece. You need to get the right feed rate for your saw because if you cut too fast, it can degrade the quality of the cut and it can also lead you to a binding situation which can mean kickback, never good. By the same token, you don't want to cut too slow because look what happens. The saw blade can actually burn the wood and cherry is notorious for that. So I guess what you want to do is Goldilocks it. Just find the right feed rate for you. So it's just right, right? Right. I'm going to unplug this for you. Thanks. All right. So going from a super easy rip cut to something that's a little more challenging. Let's say you want to cut thin strips of wood to edge plywood. You can see that even getting the saw blade that close with the guards in place is a challenge. And also, your thin strips can slide through the insert, which isn't safe. But we've got a great solution to this particular challenge. Part one of that means putting in a zero clearance insert or throat plate. You can buy them or make your own. Disassemble the components, guard, 
Paul's insert riving knife. This insert is made from half inch MDF and is shaped by tracing the manufacturer's insert. Lower the blade to accommodate the new insert and move the fence to secure it. Turn on the saw and raise the blade up and through. Almost there. To keep the cut safe, I needed to cut a slot to accommodate the riving knife and other safety equipment. Part two of making this cut involves using a thin rip table saw jig. It fits in the miter slot. You adjust the jig to the width of the cut you need and make your cut. You reposition the fence for each succeeding cut. By keeping the cut to the left of the saw blade, you avoid binding. Okay, it is one thing to cut super slender pieces and quite another pieces that are super long. Yes, and we have to cut stock like this eight foot piece of plywood all the time. Right, you know, and in an ideal world, there would be someone in your shop all the time just ready, willing, and able to catch that falling end. We sometimes we call it the dumb end. Thanks. Yeah, I'll no remember problem. that. No. Actually, this is all about the outfeed table. Yes, and outfeed tables are super useful. They work similarly to the outfeed stand that we saw earlier, and I'll use it to support the wood as it goes off the table saw. Thank <laughs> you.